Alright, hello and welcome back to Let's Play yet another No Name Aim game. Today's No Name Aim game is, of course, Icy Jack. Yeah, no, just kidding. This game has to um, go through this long, prolonged sort of checking the hardware sort of sequence. And unfortunately, it has to do it every single time it boots up. I'm not entirely sure why it has to do it every single time. I mean, you'd think maybe it's like, eh, it saves a couple settings and it says it's good. This is by far the longest startup sequence I've seen in quite a while. Maybe ever. Yep, and it has to go through that again. And then the background was cycled diagonally, and then we're in business. So, hello and welcome back. Now let's play yet another No Name Aim game. Today's name, no, no Name Aim game is, of course, Teddy Boy Blues. Man, while I watch this intro, I'm constantly on edge expecting something new to happen. Like, I feel it has to go to some sort of, um, another thing, but... Oh, it did. Okay. Wow. It was, like, constantly, it was like, do the next thing, do the next thing! Did you see the, on the drum? I swear, that's like the Neo Geo boy logo thing. So the first button is shoot, and the second button is jump. What? That's right, it's an old-school platformer with a gun? This teddy boy probably should have called him Tommy, but he just kind of walks around and shoots the ninjas. I'm not even sure there's really a plot-specified reason for him to shoot people. He's just kind of doing it out of the, you know, goodness of his heart. And so, just like f strangely reminiscent of Flicky, we have stages that loop. Okay, so given enough shots, you can break through anything. And someone sure made a lot of wishes. Actually, well, no, they would have made a lot of wishes. They just wouldn't have gotten them yet. Uh oh. Do we even have to fight against flies? Or are the flies just kind of there to um, pick up the corpse? So if you don't get the corpses in time, flies pop out of them and start eating the amount of time you have left. In the eternal words of the internet, seems legit. So, are you supposed to, um, shoot Flicky and Pengu, I believe? Or the snail from, um... Was that Kiwi Adventures? Oh, it must be the Happy, Happy Adventures. Or Adventure Island. Well, I will say that even though this game is, like, fairly old, it's... It's very playable, and things are moving quite fluidly. Oh gosh, we've got those wish things in all the name. Oh wow. <laughs> you shoot the enemies and then they fly everywhere. It's kind of interesting that the emphasis isn't necessarily on um, killing the enemies so much as it is about being able to platform around and collect the enemies fast enough. Are they eating or are the do the flies eat the time or the Yeah no the flies eat the time. Oh we'll okay, care, time bar is just really long. You know, this game is begging for auto fire. Oh wow, that just like drastically increased his rate of fire. And you know what the best part is? It's probably a power up for him. Wow. So that is like a weird game. I mean yeah, like I said earlier, the emphasis is on platforming, not necessarily um killing. I wonder... Oh, is that an enemy generator? Not likely, but... Wow, that is a lot of time. And I don't think I've ever seen someone, like, double loop it over. Oh, gosh. I feel like this is getting a little unfair. Also, I'm a little curious, will it let us continue or not? That's probably one of the bigger deciding factors for a game. Will it let us continue or not? Although, I mean, with a game this delightful, I mean, wouldn't you want to play it over and over and over and over again? Let's see, I bet you can kind of get away with, um, just letting the guys go everywhere. Well, I guess it's not so unique that they focus a bit on killing the enemies and then collecting them later. Because, I mean, Joust kind of did that. Although, no, Joust, Joust also had it where, like, if you killed everyone, then you could just go to the next level, no questions asked. But this game 
It's, the emphasis is entirely on collecting it. And I mean, the enemies aren't necessarily so devastating one on one. Uh oh. Alas, I think this game came out before the concept of continuing your game. Um. Oh, okay. So it's second button to select your name. Otherwise. It's, it uh, responds quite nicely to button input. I say it's it's a decent name entry screen. It's not doing anything special, but does it really need to? Maybe a little. But yeah, the enemies themselves don't seem to be, like, so tricky. It's more just, like, the combination of them in mass. And then also the added pressure of uh, being forced to collect. So I'm assuming that this game, like... It's, it's not a gun he has. I'm pretty sure he's just, like, shrinking them or something. Which probably is just as bad if you think about it. But, uh, whatever. But yeah, I don't think he's, like, technically killing them? I don't know. They, I'm sure they've got, like, a little plot in there, and they've, like, uh, lied it up so that he's just not... It's not blatantly he's killing them. You know, that would the kids or something. Oh gosh, that's so surreal how like, not only the stage loops, but it loops in... Ooh. Is it just like random chance? Oh wow, okay. So now we just need to look... Wow. So I'm guessing you just walk around, press A, around the objects, see if there's any treasure. <laughs> just knocks it over, that's pretty funny. And I'm assuming we're just doing this for a nice little score. What was the other time up? Oh, it was shooting things. Maybe that was a little more dynamic, a little more in tune with the game. Oh, so back to the scrolling. I mean, everything repeats, and that's okay, but like the way it repeats, it's, it's actually kind of a little hard to wrap your mind around. Just because, like, everything loops around. I don't know, it's kind of ridiculous. And I can only imagine how it was the program. Although I'm sure if you add in a couple of modulos in there and you just kind of have everything mod over a little bit, then it's probably not that bad, but I don't know. It's, it's really surreal though. I mean, you like, you see enemies to your left and you go a little bit to the right and suddenly they're on your right. And those like crazy chomper guys, even though they look like really ferocious, they're they're surprisingly easy to destroy. Huh. Okay, yeah, if I just keep going down this way, then I'll beat them. Well, I'd say it's not a hard game, but I've already died in, like, level four, so... Oh, jeez. It's... It's a game where you have to be cautious and know what you're doing. Like, you can't just rush in guns blazing. You kind of have to plan things out a little bit. Oh, no, no, you can select with the A button, it's just that with auto-fire engaged, it's a little hard. Okay, so it does let you scroll through if you hold down the button, so... Not bad. Okay, I don't think you can destroy the dice, but it does seem like you can destroy basically everything else. Uh, like the, um, dominoes. Or are they dominoes? Let's see, nope, well, you can sort of control him when he's in the air. It's, it's a little floaty, but definitely doable. Huh. Yeah, no, it doesn't really seem like you can kill the blocks outright, but you can um, kill the guys like as soon as they come out of the blocks, which is about as good if you're not too specific about what you want. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, again, it's not really, like, a hard sort of game, but it's like a game where you have to know what you're doing, you have to, like, know how to approach enemies. Because, like, you look at that giant snake thing, and that snake thing's moving pretty fast, and there's no real way you can kill them all. Weird, are they worth different points based on, like, how quickly you can get to them, or... Or are they worth points based on who they are? Oh, was that the final tree boss from, uh, Fantasy Zone? Wow, it's just like a whole... No player lost bonus points. 
Oh, cool. I can... Dang it. I wanted to go to the whale. But... Awesome. So if you do perfectly on a bonus round, then you get to select warp. That's like... Wow. I don't think I've ever heard of any other game doing that. And that's... That's pretty awesome, quite frankly. I mean, yeah, it makes sense, too, because it's like, if you played enough times to get the bonus round perfect, then you're probably going to be able to get to that stage anyway. I can get to level 15 with my eyes closed. And then there's also that extra bit of skill in that, like, it's not so much being able to hit everything, it's being able to hit everything fast that really gets you the super, super big points. This just got me regular big points. Wow, those... Jeromaka guys or whatever, they just kind of rush at you, and so if you're not quite fast enough, then you're not going to kill them all. Like, I can imagine it would be a lot harder without auto-fire. Well, harder too, and also a lot more tiring. Gosh. There's like a lot of firing you do in this game. But yeah, what... <laughs> I mean, you see this stage, if you know what you're doing, psh, easy sauce. Oh, five already? This stage was a little tricky, and you had to wait for those guys. I'm not entirely sure how this fits into the whole chronology of Sega-developed, um, 8-ish bit games. And I also wonder if this, like, made it to the Master System or not. Because if this was on the Master System, maybe it's worthwhile to just go out there and pick up a Master System, then. On the Master System... Well, okay, Sega consoles have always had, like... A lot of Sega's arcade ports, and those are kind of stars of the show. Sega's pretty good at making crazy arcade games that are cool. I mean, actually, it's really impressive because they've done it for like almost all um, generations of video games. I mean, you've got like earlier stuff like Flicky and Outrun, which are like total classics, but then you also have um, stuff like Crazy Taxi, even like far later. And it's like stuff like even even into like the 32-bit eras, they still were in like 64 slash bits don't matter eras. They were able to still stay like so relevant and so awesome. It's really kind of a testament. Although ironically, they're the ones that um, don't make hardware anymore. But that could also just be because their hardware their hardware decisions were consistently baffling, if not outright neurotic. So now we've got, like, a snake just kind of bouncing around, and there's no good way to, um, kind of ambush him. I think what we can do is, like, just pretend like we're hunting, and we just need to find, like, a good spot and just hang out there. Uh, it doesn't seem like the snake's gonna seek me out or at all. Oh, weird. So if you look at a little lives counter in the lower left-hand corner, it's like a little hat. It's like a little cap. Which is especially interesting because this guy wears a beret, not like a cap like that. Oh, that was the wrong way to scroll. And I've already lost my chance to scroll out to the next level. Wow, they should have just made a game that was just like the shooting gallery. Because it's nice, it's fluid, it makes sense. Like you just press left to go left, press right to go right. It just feels right, <laughs> but it does. Ooh, that's gonna be a bother. Well, maybe not so much, actually, because then you can just jump. Oh, what? Everything respawns? I feel like it's going a bit too far. Oh, wow, it's gonna be a lot of flies, if I'm not too careful. Is it me or is it like a pig in the background? Oh my god, these... I will give them, like, props for the level designs, but man, they just constantly feel so surreal. Like, you're living an M.C. Escher painting. Maybe not quite that bad, but it's... It's just... It takes you a while to, like, figure out where you are and where you're going and how to get there and all that. Sort of lovely junk. Oh, wow. And this stage is all about the close quarters and being cramped. And being able to collect enough corpses that the flies won't kill you. Fortunately, there we go. 
but I will do it and give it another go. Let's check out that bonus stage. I think I can make it to um this the whale level. I don't know why I'm scrolling through. It's not quite responsive enough to um go with what I'm saying. Oh wow, I was wondering if you could destroy these things and you can! Oh that's great. You can just turn the level <laughs> destructible environments. Now, I'm not going to say that this is the first game with destructible environments, but that was not a big thing back in the day. And so the very fact that you can just go through, like, this sort of mayhem... Although, I think this is, like, late 80s now that I think about it, which... It's actually kind of late, but it's still early for, like, destructible environments. And that's really cool, you can just, like, destroy everything. Sadly, shooting those things doesn't really give you points, but it's something to do while you're waiting for those stupid ninja guys just kind of walk down slowly. Oh wow, is it, is it this bonus stage after level 2? It's kind of like the flicky philosophy where it's like bonus stages early often and for big points. Alright, Snake, let's see what you've got. You're mine now? No! I was his. Alright, we just need to ambush him. Or, or take little pot shots at him. Oh, correct. Because I think he's actually kind of faster than me, so that's no good. Alright, there's just one of them. Yeah, he's not so terrifying on his own. Yeah, that one's gonna turn into a fly, but hey, what can you do? And it's kind of funny, it's like even when they're spite even when they're defeated, the, the enemies in like one spiteful little burst can come back and haunt you. Man, that just took a little bit of focus. You just have to focus in and see what's happening. All right, whale stage, here we are. Honestly, it's not as exciting as I thought it would be, because you can't even really see the whale all the time. Although, oh gosh, yeah, I figured that spot was a little too good to be true. And well, with our ill, what we got with our ill-gotten gains, we have to give back. Still, this was a surprisingly awesome, surprisingly playable, enjoyable, platforming, shooting game. Yeah, that's right, it's a shooting game. Wouldn't expect a kid with a gun in a game called Teddy, Bo Teddy Boy Blues, but there we go. <laughs> that is kind of funny, that little intro screen where it's like all the enemies dressed up as the guys. And then look at the drums, I swear, that's like some variation of the Neo Geo logo. This game was surprisingly awesome, and especially this intro screen, that, that really shows like a level of dedication, a level of love for this, for the game. In fact, if this is from the right time period, I'm not even sure they always had intro screens. 1985. So that's kind of when they started to like know what they were doing, but not quite to the time when it was the late 80s when they really knew what they were doing. So, okay, maybe not super, super impressive, but still pretty impressive. And I mean, anytime you make a game that like this playable and this fun, and like there's all the enemies are like popcorn enemies. So wow, that that's actually really awesome. So yeah, this is a pretty cool game. Definitely enjoyed it. Well, on that note, this cat's got a scat.